the cost of food continues to skyrocket in Kenya. However, with this on record, producers of the food, who are mainly farmers, continue to remain poor. In Kenya, food security is among President Uhuru Kenyatta's big four agenda. But commitment by the government in creating a sustainable food chain from farm to fork, where each player is able to actively participate and earn adequately, is still in doubt. Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Business Now. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matola. First, here are the highlights. Just how much does it cost to produce food and get it to the market? Are brokers a necessary evil or a broken market function? And in our weekly segment Made in Kenya, we are in Kibra for ornaments made out of bones that are raking in profits. I will be telling you who my guests are in a moment today. It's the cost of food at both ends of the production level and at the level of the consumer. It's actually a timely topic considering um, the timing of the show. We will get to that in a moment and I'll be telling you who my guests are. But first, let's take a look at some of the stories that are making headlines this afternoon. Now, a draft Kenya comprehensive medical report shows that only 20% of Kenyans have any form of health insurance. The developed by 13 actuaries and consulting team contracted by National Treasury proposes to bring community-based health within the regulatory of the regulation of the Insurance Regulatory Authority, also proposing establishing an independent accreditation body to carry out the accreditation process of all healthcare providers in the industry with the engagement of all other provider bodies in the industry, such as the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Council, the Clinic Officers Council, the Nursing Council of Kenya, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, as well as the Ministry of Health. Elsewhere, the Senate Committee on Energy continues to grill Petroleum Cabinet Secretary John Munez over the high petroleum products, the high cost of petroleum products in the country. This comes at a time when the National Treasury and the National Assembly have locked horns over proposals by the MPs to cut down on taxes levied on fuel products. Parliament has in the last three weeks been seeking a solution to the high prices following uproar by Kenyans after the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority posted historical rates for the next 30 days. And lastly, the Kenya Revenue Authority says it will not appeal a decision by the courts to quash plans of imposing the minimum tax on businesses. Speaking during the launch of this year's Taxpayers Week in Nairobi, Commissioner General Gidhi Mburu said they would instead explore other creative ways of raising revenue, insisting that the exchequer stands to lose up to 25 billion shillings that is critical for service delivery to Kenyans. So on the show this afternoon, it's all about that very important meal you are probably having as we speak. We're talking about the cost of food. We're taking a look at it throughout the value chain. And to discuss this with me, we have on the program today, we'll be speaking to Professor Dominic Mwenja, who's from the Nairobi Farmers Market. We'll be telling you what that is and the concept behind it and how this is probably one of the things that talks about the cost of food. Emmanuel Atamba is also with us. He's a researcher and policy analyst at Root to Food. They should be joining us in a short moment and you can chime in as well. The hashtag is business now at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okwara. Great, but first, it's time to take a look at the five. Now, the cost and price are the two most important factors in the food supply chain, at the very beginning with the farmer and at the very end with the consumer. The farmer cares about the cost of production of the food as it'll affect the price he or she can fetch for their products. As for the consumer, the cost of the food production across the entire supply chain will affect the price of the final item and, of course, their ability 
to pay for it. Now, there are several drivers of cost across the five important steps of the food supply chain. And I'd like us to begin at the very beginning. And it starts off, of course, with production. Now, this is the very beginning, and it starts with the farmer producing fruits, vegetables, livestock, and other products. At this point, the farmer has to deal with investment costs and production costs, the costs of farming implements, seed, fertilizer, even water for irrigation, as well as several others. Now, the second stage of the supply chain um, is processing. Now, this stage involves the transformation of the agricultural products into various foods and ingredients. Now here you have investment costs as well as manufacturing costs and here you'd have to bear in mind the cost of electricity. You might have a transportation cost from the farmer at the production stage to the processor and remember this is where we start to see a markup cost here as well as the processing stage has increased the value of the initial product. Now the next stage would be distribution. This is where we have uh, the biggest cost driver some would say. It's the cost of transportation. Now, this step can actually come right after the production stage where the farmer just needs to transport uh, their fresh produce straight to the market. Or it can come after the processing stage to the market. Now, the biggest issue here would be the cost of fuel. Remember, the distributor will also have to increase their market price as they're in business and they want to make profit. Let's take a look at the next one. Now, this is the retailer stage. This is essentially the markets where the food produce is sold, where you and I go to buy the food. Basically, this is an aggregator stage as well. The markets bringing together commodities from different producers or different farmers. This is the touch point with a consumer. Now, at this point, some more costs are added to the cost of the product. The retailer has rent to pay for the space and the cost of utilities such as electricity must be factored in. They've got staff costs as well, marketing costs, and don't forget the all-important markup cost. Now, the final stage of the food supply chain is you and I, the consumer. This is the final stage of the food supply chain with their purchase. The consumer is able to now make sure that the revenue flows back across the value chain all the way to the first point, that is the farmer. Now the consumer is typically the driver of standards, health and safety of the products across the entire chain. They're powerful because they are the deciders of quality and standards. Now in some way, they can also determine the cost of food. Their purchasing power is what determines the cost. Now the profit margins in this entire supply chain some of the important facts to consider are the cost of production, which may be affordable, but the cost drivers along the supply chain determine the final price for the consumer. Those cost drivers along the entire supply chain, as we've shown you, may also be disadvantageous to the farmer as they affect the final price and the consumer's ability to pay that act asking price is what determines whether they actually buy the products and affects the revenue that flows back to the producer in the end. So, if the consumer thinks the food is expensive, then you cannot buy the food. Then all players along the value chain will suffer. So that is the five important steps in the food supply chain. So now that you understand that from the five, it's time to get into our conversation today. Like I said, we've got Professor Dominic Munja, who is from the Nairobi Farmers Market. We also have with us today Emmanuel Atamba, who is a research and policy analyst at Root to Food. And don't forget, we'll be taking a look at your views as well. Like I said, the hashtag is business now. Um, what is the most uh, you know, important thing for you when it comes to the cost of food? Are you a farmer? Do you find that you're getting less for your produce or are you a consumer and you think food is expensive? I'd like to hear from you as well. And remember, we'll also be taking a look at what else is happening across the country. I believe our Patrick Igunza will be out actually testing the cost of food. He gets all the fancy assignments. So he'll be eating tutakwatuki 
tukimwona na macho tutakuwa tukimeza mate akikula nyama all right we'll get to that in a moment thank you gentlemen for joining me on the thank program um, we'll speak about the Nairobi farmers market and what that concept is like in a moment um, but Emmanuel could you set the stage for us um, mm -hmm. you know with a conversation we're having yeah. the cost of food both at the production and at the consumer end Kenyan say food is expensive farmers say they're not getting enough mm -hmm. what's happening here yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne, for, for, for having me. I'll, uh, I'll allow me to use this example I used uh, some time back. What we are seeing is a situation where there is a disjoint uh, communication between the people who are producing the food and the people who are eating this food. And, and, and in, our, in our scenario, it's um, is almost like, um, you know, um, one party is bad-mouthing bad either of the two parties because you have someone in the middle. This person in the middle is the person who comes to Nairobi and tells consumers that, you know what, farmers don't care about you. They're spraying chemicals on your food. They're doing ABCD. They're increasing the cost of food. But then they rush to the farmers and say, consumers want cheap food. And they probably don't care about how much you get. And, and so you find farmers are, are, are not really concerned about what consumers want. And then at the, at, the same, at the same time, consumers are also not very concerned about what farmers are going through and how much is getting to these farmers. So we have the same people. And again, in the same society, we have uh, people who are Farmers and consumers at the same time. I'm also a farmer myself, but I tend to buy some of the food that I that I eat. But there's really no clear conversation between the people are producing the food and the people who are consuming that food, and that is where the the, the, the whole the problem start from. And what what should um, that conversation entail? What should that, we be saying about this gap between the two? It, yeah. So definitely, that conversation should be about prices. Uh, what is the efficient price for you? Yeah, um, if Profia is producing um, uh, tomatoes, for example, I want to know as a consumer what price makes him comfortable to continue producing. And at the same time, I'll give him a list of my demands and say, okay, so if you're producing tomatoes, don't use this chemical, don't use this, don't produce it like this, don't uh, you know harvest before it's ripened, for example, and all that. So I'll give some sort of criteria on how I want the tomatoes to get to me. And then now that conversation ends up having both the producer satisfied and the consumer satisfied because it, it's about the pricing and it's also about the quality. I don't think, for example, that we should look at the price of food in isolation and just look at it from the consumer side. I think the point you're raising that, you know, in as much as the price is, is, is high on the consumer side, that also producers are not, are not happy. So if it was like, okay, farmers are enjoying and farmers are becoming rich because of all this, then we would only have one group to deal with. But here we have the, both the two groups to try to, to deal with. Let me ask you, um, and, and I guess this can go to you, Prof. Are brokers a necessary evil or a broker? can market function. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, I think as we look at the cost of food, we have to look at the entire value chain. Mm -hmm. uh, with the five step that we just went through, I'll take you one step back. And the first step, step should be preparation for production. Mm -hmm. uh, because food is not grown in isolation. It is grown within an environment that is prepared for production. Mm -hmm. So if we don't prepare our farmers, one, in terms of education, in terms of uh, uh, providing them the necessary implements, uh, whatever they need to produce, then whatever they're going to produce may not be enough in terms of the productivity per square meter mm -hmm. for, for that farm in order for them to command the kind of volumes they want. Then from there, now we come now to the pricing and how we get the food. Now, we need to get to that level where we are educating our farmers from education of our farmers, and I'll, I'll be able. And there are some lists here of things that we that are facing agriculture sector in this country, yeah. uh, such that by the time we do pre-production, we come to production. Then from there, it can go two ways. It can go into processing, mm -hmm. or it can go straight. into straight into, into the, the market. market. Yes. And I happen to be in all the stages yeah. uh, because I do training for production. Yeah. Uh, we have outlets that we do, like the one we have at, at the Nairobi Farmers Market, mm -hmm. uh, that we do uh, uh, bring food directly from the farms into the market, mm -hmm. and therefore cutting the middleman. Yes. When you cut the middleman, uh -huh. uh, then you start to see now that has two impacts. The first impact is you know where your food is coming from because you get to understand the farmers. Yeah, so I want us to just dial it back a little bit for, for our viewers to understand Nairobi Farmers Market and the concept. Um, I would describe it simply as cutting out that you know, that big mm -hmm. middleman uh, challenge. So, you know, what is this? It's, it's farmers just saying, look, here's our produce. We're here, we're gonna sell it. Um, and why was this started? What's the premise of the Nairobi Farmers Market? Uh, the premise is really to bring the cost of food down 
to our final consumers. But then at the same time, there's something called traceability in food production, and it's extremely important. You're able to trace where is your food coming from. Get to know your farmer. Uh, in, in, in our case, we have a concept that we call for you by us. Mm -hmm. And because we train young people on production of food, uh, using modern science and technology, uh, we are able now to tell the, the consumers, we grow this food for you, it's grown for you by, by us. And you, ha you can trace that food back to where that farmer is growing the food. Now, that's one of them. One, th so we shorten the supply chain mm -hmm. by, uh, by taking out the middleman. So that 30 or 40% uh, additional cost that could have been there that goes to the middleman, it comes as savings now to the farmer, uh, now to, to, to the final consumer. Right. We are also able to pay the farmer a little bit better than they would when they're buying. For, when the, the, so if the, I come to the farmer's market, yes. I'm buying from the farmer? No, you're buying now from the, the, the folks who bring, like us now, we are producers. Yeah. I produce food. Uh, then from our farm directly to our to our shop at farmers market. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have other farmers who come directly every single day, they bring food from the farm okay. to the market. Uh -huh. That way, uh, the cost of food comes down. Then at the same time, you get to know the source of your food. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're looking at the safety and also, because the issue of safety is very important. Mm -hmm. If you don't know where your food is being grown, yes. you cannot trace it back. Then sometimes you don't even know what you're eating. Good. And we'll come back and talk about, um, you know, food safety as well. Mm -hmm. I know we keep talking about the cost of it, but the safety of the food is also mm -hmm. equally important. And this is something I know, um, Emmanuel, you've done a lot of work on, you know, yeah. at the root to food. And like you say, it's important that traceability. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we look at the cost, but also the cost of food that is not safe is actually much greater, even on the consumer. If they get unwell, then they have to incur more costs in terms of health care. Mm -hmm. And so that is something we also want to think about. So um, just to mention that both of the gentlemen with me in studio are farmers as well but we also want to hear about farmers who are you know out there in the country and we want to just take a look we spoke to some farmers in Nakuru and you know we talked to them about the cost of production what they put in um, what that is like how easy it is to find the implements that they need uh, for the production of food and at the end of the day what they get out of it watch Kwa sababu, sisi hatuna control ya price. Lakini fertilizer, wanatuongeze. Kwa kama size, iko 39. Fertilizer. Aya, viazi, iko 11. Nairobi. Aya, starting with. Kwa eka, kama hapa tuko, tumekombua 15. 15,000 pa eka. Unaeka mifuko tano ya fertilizer. From there, there is labor. Mbegu, unanua 3,000 pa bag. Unapanda. Upanda, eight people. Uh, eight people, 200 each. Uaripa. From there, unareba ya kupariria. Ziazi unaparia safari mbiri. Iyo reba yote mbiri, unaripa 15,000. From there, kuna dawa. Sasa yu ndiyo maneno hiko. One acre, ndiyo ifanya vizuri, unatumia 20,000. Kwa sababu dawa, kuna yenye hiko juu. Kuna enye hiko chini, na kuringawa na weza, una alternate. Unangojea four months, ndi ikue ready. Sasa, unaweka watu kama uwenye umekuta kwa shamba. Ikitua vizuri kabisa, itue 100 bags. As per now, uze na 1,100. Siyo ni 1,100, nini shillings. Ukitua nisha, inakuja zero. For now, ni zero. Sahi wakulima wamelia, 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 sababu viazi tunasukumua tushone kilo hamsini. Na kilo hii hamsini tunasukumua hairigani, hairigani na, na vile wakulima wanatoa kwa mashaba. Ili, nikisema kurigana hai, vile inatoka, it is the production inaogea maneno yake. Sababu mashaba imekoda sikuisi. Na kurigana na, na magunia hiyo ninasema ya dusura. Dusura tulikuwa na chaganya viazi, unaweka kidogo, unaweka kubwa, na inakuwa unapata una, una, una mununusi. Saa hii viazi ya kilo hamsini inataka ile viazi standard kabisa, na unakuta wakulima wote hawezi tuwa viazi hiyo standard. That, you know, aside for a moment, and, and from what they're saying, um, the cost of production, Emmanuel, what, what, what exactly goes into that? And how can we, perhaps, farmers be more efficient so that they're able to get more uh, with less, perhaps? 
Yeah, I think, uh, I think the first thing we need to really talk about in this country is our approach to food production and, 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 and really the attitude that we have when you look at food production and when you look at farming. And um, uh, for example, there is this conversation around agribusiness and, and, and young people in farming. And, and, and you hear people say, for example, that there's money in the soil. I keep asking, you know, if someone tells you, if you're broke and someone tells you that there's 2,000 shillings under your bed, you know, will your bedding survive the, the violence that will be there to try to get the 2,000 shillings under mm. them? So that is the kind of attitude that we are looking at. And, 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 and this approach, uh, you know, large-scale industrial focusing on monocultures, focusing on high external inputs, is really what is one of the main factors that is driving high cost of food production. And, and I, think, um, I think I'll give you an example, for example, for maize, comparing yeah. maize production costs in Kenya versus in Uganda. And you find that most farmers in Uganda, in as much as they are farmers who use chemical fertilizers, but most farmers in Uganda don't rely a lot on chemical fertilizer compared to maize farmers here in Kenya. And you find that to produce a bag of maize here is 750 shillings plus more expensive than it is to produce in Uganda. But why? And, is and that is why it's because of high dependence on external inputs. This, what, what, you know, what, what this farmer is talking about, the farmer was talking about, um, you know, uh, the cost of chemical inputs yeah. being about 20,000 shillings. Yeah. But the question we should ask ourselves is, can we use knowledge and innovation, local innovations that you know farmers uh, come up with, uh, information that farmers know about weather, about uh, you know f uh, production practices that can reduce, for example, the dependence on chemical pesticides to manage pests and diseases. But let me ask you this. Um, when we compare ourselves with Uganda, the climate in Uganda is very different. It almost rains yeah. throughout the year uh, you know, in Uganda as opposed to to hear and so perhaps they would say the weather there is more favorable yeah. whereas we know what you know what the situation is like in Kenya in fact right now drought has been declared a national disaster I agree. and so maybe it's yeah. you know the poor weather here that makes us depend more on the chemical no, implements no, not really not really I think Yvonne we are trying to say that we cannot address <laughs> the issue okay. but because you know now when we say weather then we say okay these are yeah, it's out of, of our control and, you know, right no but uh, to be honest yes uh -huh. um, in as much as if you look at the, the amount of, of, of land in Kenya that is arid and semi-arid is more in terms of ratio compared to what is in Uganda but the, in terms of in terms of weather patterns and climate is almost the same. If you look at Uganda and you look at Western Kenya and the, uh, the, the productive parts of Rift Valley, you'll find it's almost the same uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of really just the weather patterns mm. and, 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 and rainfall and all that. So there's really no challenge there. But uh, wh what I'm saying is, if you talk to farmers in Kenya today, if a farmer is going to produce potatoes, potatoes is a very delicate uh, crop, uh, not very delicate compared to tomatoes, for example. But if you talk to potato farmers and tomato farmers, and especially tomato farmers are very notorious for this, they'll say, I need to buy the chemicals before I even see the disease, okay? So you're already assuming that mm -hmm. you will have tomato blight. Uh -huh. You haven't seen it. So you've already bought the chemical, it's in your store. Uh -huh. So you've already incurred that cost. Right. So that even in the event where this disease does not affect your crops, you have already spent that much. And so you when, you do the, when you do the cost of calculation, you find that some of the costs that we incur in production might not be necessary if we bring in innovation and information. For example, when you had four lammyworms, you saw some farmers in central Kenya spraying, you know, soil on maize. They, they just take the soil and throw it on maize and all that. And I don't know how the magic works, but, you know, somehow they are able to deal with, with four lammyworms. Some yeah. were using this traditional maize. In Kikui, it's called Gidhigu. In uh, Luo, it's called Nyamula. Mm -hmm. You know, this maize that is colored and all that. Mm -hmm. and, and people confirmed that actually those maize uh, varieties yes. were not very susceptible to four lammyworms. Uh -huh. So those are the conversations we need to have. That is there a cheaper way to produce our food? Okay. That is one. Uh -huh. Then just the second one is, of course, the cost of production in this country, in anything, yeah. in anything, yeah. is high. Even the cost of labor. Mm. Yeah, I just left Eldoret uh, the other day. Mm. I told you I was in the farm. Mm. I've left guys working in the farm. The cost that these guys are charging to work on the farm is so high. And why? It's because they, go, they need to go and buy sugar, which is expensive. Uh -huh. They need to go and buy these other things, which is expensive. Fuel. They need to take their children to school, which is expensive. So the cost of labor, even in rural areas, is increasing. And that is one of the factors that is also pushing up the cost of the cost of production. So if we look at agriculture in, in the sense of how the economy is run and how the economy operates, you will see that there's really a real source of this high cost. It's not imagined. Yeah. Uh, there's really a, 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 a real source of that. And, and, and of course, there are other aspects also that we will talk about. Yeah. There are other aspects that come with that. But the, qu the first question we should ask ourselves is, 
can we produce our food in a way that is better, in a way that is safer for the environment, in a way that is safer for consumers, and even at a lower cost? Absolutely. That is a question we haven't asked ourselves as Kenyans. Uh, indeed, and it's uh, about looking at it in the entire you know, economic sector, you know, yeah. having that yeah. as a global context for the conversation. So it's not just about looking at yeah. agriculture. Prof, I want to ask you what um, your experience has been at the Nairobi Farmers Market. It's been in operation since what, January? Almost I, I, a year I, I, almost, almost a year a now. Year, yeah. um, you know, what are the learning lessons? It's been Maybe almost yeah, a year, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, what's working, you know, what's not? What are you learning as you go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, think, I think for us when we got started, uh, there's excitement, farmers are bringing the food, mm -hmm. everybody is happy, uh, production, you're getting directly from your farm to the market. Uh, and I think what we need to do is to let more Kenyans know that there are markets like those that make it possible for you to buy food at a lower price, food that is uh, that you can be able to trace where that food is coming from. And there's also supply of the same amount of food, the same level of, uh, of, of supply throughout. Because when you have farmers that you have, it's almost like contract farming. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it okay. myself. Because uh, for me, the food that comes from my farms, they go directly to the market. Uh, and I know exactly what is coming. Uh, we have several outlets ourselves. And we know when the food is coming from the market, if it's tomatoes, capsicum, whatever, it's going directly into the shops where they're coming from. Now, that cuts uh, the price for the farmers. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's really to get the word out to people and let people know that this market, these organized markets where farmers cut the middlemen and go directly now to the consumers, makes it possible for them to get these very, very uh, inexpensive foods right. that are also traceable. Let me ask the effect of COVID-19, um, you know, because yeah. it has affected all of us mm -hmm. in terms of even just the ability to pay mm -hmm. yeah. um, for quality food. So for instance, our purchasing power now is nowhere near what it was yes. um, in 2019, mm -hmm. for instance. How has that affected you know, the uptake or, or the success of the Nairobi farmers market? Yeah. Uh, le let me give you an example that I usually give. Uh, when COVID hit in 2020, that time I was the CEO at Mata Hospital. Mm. Uh, and uh, before that, I was in academia. And I used to say there are three concerns in life. There is education, healthcare, and food. COVID hits, uh, schools are close for a whole year. Uh, I saw the occupancy rate of the hospital drop from 80, 85 to about 30, 32 within about 90 days. That means people postponing going to see the doctor because of fear of COVID. Right. Now, COVID or not, people still have to eat every single day. Absolutely. So what COVID has taught us is food is the only constant in life that you have and you cannot do without. Mm -hmm. And therefore, those of us in this sector have to do whatever we can mm -hmm. to provide a sustainable supply of food, safe uh, uh, food that is, uh, that is safe, safe to eat, while at the same time keeping the prices down for everybody else. Now, at the farmer's market, uh, we, and the part of the thing that we have not seen is an influx of a lot of people coming in, mo mostly because the pocket is a little bit, mm. somebody who could have spent, you, you, mm. see, you see someone who could have spent 2,000 shillings. Yeah. Uh, because they don't have as much uh, disposable income, yeah. they probably spend about 800 shillings or 500 shillings or 300 shillings. And hopefully they can stretch that. Mm. So we are, we, are, we are hoping that as, as time comes uh, and we get over it, this COVID thing, in post-COVID, then people will be able to eat uh, enough food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to spend more right. uh, per, per, per visit mm. to, 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 to the food market. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is our hope. So as Kenyans get to understand that these markets are actually well organized, uh, and I'm hoping this concept that we have at Nairobi Farmers Market can be duplicated in different parts of the country, where now you cut this, little, this guy who goes to Nyandarwa and gets potatoes, yeah. and that potato comes directly now from Nyandarwa to the market. Mm -hmm. We can afford to pay that, 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 that farm a little bit more because the money that was coming in between uh, for, the, for the brokers yeah. is actually uh, g being given back both to the farmer and, and also the consumer as well. So he has an effect, an effect on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's talk about uh, food safety now, because um, that's also yeah. very important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know, you can talk about cost, 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 yeah. but there's also a hidden cost when you know, food is not safe. Mm -hmm. um, so speak to us about this. I mean, this is Nairobi, my friend. You buy yeah. food, you have no idea where it's grown, the conditions under which it was mm -hmm. grown, mm -hmm. um, and you know, the food can, can actually have some more higher costs on yeah. you in terms of health. Mm -hmm. How important is that and how safe is our food in the country? Yeah. 
Amen. Yeah, let me, let, me, let me talk about that even, but maybe before that, uh, because I have some friends who identify themselves as brokers, they might kill me if I don't <laughs> say this. That uh, you ask if brokers are necessary evil, I think, I think at some level, I, I think they are. Mm -hmm. um, if you engage with farmers, the brokers are also providing what we call brokers, actually just intermediaries, are yeah. also providing some extra services. For example, dairy farmers, you know, you, uh, your cow is sick, uh, so you go to the guy who buys the milk from you and borrow a loan quickly because they know your production, they'll uh -huh. give you a loan. And so they facilitate transactions somehow. And, 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 and where they come in, because of the failure of the market system, where they come in is because they have information that producers don't have and consumers don't have. And I think to eliminate brokers is not necessarily to replace them with better brokers, uh -huh. okay? And, and I think as Dr. is saying, for example, you can have an efficient system like Nairobi Farmers Market, efficient. It, cre it creates more revenue to the producers and, and more benefit to the consumers. Um, there are people who are going to apps, you order through apps mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. It might be more efficient, but it's just a replacement of the other original Absolutely. kind of system. They are still the so, distributors. So, so, so I think the most important thing is that transparency along the chain. And if, uh, you know, this kind of initiatives are there for us to say, okay, so this is how much we paid the farmer, and this is how much we are charging you, that transparency and that information across, I think is what we need to push for more fairness in terms of, in terms of the food systems. Now, to the question of food safety, um, I think, uh, growing, um, there's, a, there's a growing kind of concern that, you know, safe food is for a few people. And I was just chatting with my colleagues at Root to Food one time and said, you know, imagine you walk into a supermarket and you see a shelf that is labeled safe food. <laughs> How many people will walk towards that shelf? Very few people, because we're like, ah, you and your zungu. Yeah. You know, oh, this is for people like Yvonne. Or it must you know, be expensive. <laughs> this is for Daktari, you know, this is not for, for people like me. So, the, and, and it's, there's that kind of, of, of society that or we have built. it might cost more, if yes, you're no, saying it's safe food, That is the assumption, right? yeah. that is the assumption. And you find food that is labeled as organic, is, is three times the price. I know, you know, people will say, oh, you know, you produce low amounts and all that, but is that a period of transition that productivity is low and then it picks up? Safe food is a right of every Kenyan. Every Kenyan has a right to food under Article 43 c and adequacy is a very big component of the right to adequate mm -hmm. food. So, so that aspect of, of food safety is really something that is in, ingrained in the concept of food security. We cannot say that we are food secure until we have safe food. Mm. Because the moment you have food that is not safe, it's, in fact, it's not even food. Because it's not, <laughs> it's, it doesn't qualify to be food if it's going to harm you. Right. The definition of food includes that aspect of not harming you. So, so um, we have done some work, for example, on pesticides. I think there are a lot of discussions about food safety. There's microbial contamination, there's chemical contamination, there's poor handling throughout the, the chain. Yeah. Yes, and, and storage yeah. aspects and all that. Yeah. We have just touched the surface as route to food. And we just talked about pesticides in Kenya. And we don't even go into details. We just said, okay, there are pesticides active ingredients that have been withdrawn from the market in EU. But that we're still here. are still we're here. We know and we just it. asked ourselves, okay, is it fair? That yeah. is the question we asked. Right. People made a lot and of money. And should we it accept it, you yeah. know, as Kenyans and just say, you know, we're not going to have this? If it's, yes. if it's bad for humans in other parts of the world, we're humans just as well. Exactly. It should be uh, just as bad for us. Just hold that thought for a moment. And I'll also come to you and talk about the traceability um, of food, which ties into safety at the Nairobi Farmers Market. So can I come in and ask where was this food grown and how would I be able to you know, ensure that um, it's been safe uh, throughout that chain? Um, but we're speaking about that here. But one of the markets um, that provide food, especially from farmers up countries, Marikiti, and our Dennis Sotieno is out there uh, doing this. Uh, if you know our parents, uh, I think my mother would go to Marikiti and Gikomba at four in the morning. You know, you got the freshest food that just came from up country. <coughs> um, I'm not sure I do that, but uh, don't judge me. Let's listen to Dennis Satino, <laughs> who's in Marikiti market. Yeah. Dennis, can you hear us? I indeed uh, I'm uh, at one of uh, the busiest uh, markets in the country uh, where we do have uh, close to 10,000 traders selling uh, various uh, agricultural produce uh, here every day. And also, um, we get to see uh, hundreds and hundreds uh, of uh, trucks uh, making their way into this market, uh, delivering uh, agricultural produce uh, from uh, various uh, parts of the country. 
But uh, there are some who have said that uh, uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, buying agricultural produce, it is uh, markets like these that actually uh, give you uh, you know the best bargains. But then again, what really grows goes uh, into uh, the pricing of uh, some of these uh, produce. I'll just uh, have uh, one of uh, the traders uh, to take us uh, through uh, what uh, factors they really look at when it comes to uh, pricing of the goods in this market. Asante sikutambie um, ni nini hasa wewe huwa unauza hapa uh, kwa soko hili Majina naitwa Peter Njoroge Ndungu mimi ndio chairman wa Olwa ni Green May Sector Olwa Kulima Traders Market Association na uzanga mahindi mabichi Hiyo mahindi yako hebu tuambie wewe utoa wapi Kwa sasa tunatoa huko Molo tunatumia broker kuwekea mahindi kwa gari kisha tunakuja kuuza Eh na ni bei uh, ngapi hasa uh, wewe unauza hiyo mahindi yako kwa sasa bei kwa chini kidogo tunauza kwa indi moja shilingi kumi na kumi na mbili lakini kwa kitambo tukiuza kumi na tano na, na ishirini wakati kama huu na ni factors zipi ambazo we mwenyewe unapata kuangalia uh, ili upate kuuza uh, mahindi yako zile factors naangalianga ni supply and demand supply kiwa juu bei naenda chini supply kiwa chini na demand iko juu bei inaenda juu eh. na unatoa mahindi straight from uh, the farmer or grower on the ground ama unapitia njia zingine maybe through a broker na kwa nini hasa umeamua kufanya hivyo sisi tumia brokers sababu hiyo area ambayo naenda kuchukua bidhaa zangu sijui wenye area hiyo broker ninajua wenye area hiyo na ndiye anajua mpaka anaibaswa hiyo area kwa hivyo mimi nikitoka hapa naenda kwa za straight kwa broker wangu yanajua wale wakulima kwa hiyo area ndio anaweza kuninudia mahindi yangu eh. kwa, kwa hivyo ni vitu zipi hasa we uangalia ndio u determine sasa price ya uh, bidhaa zile unauza mahindi yako mimi muangalia quality kama mahindi iko na quality mzuri kutoka kwa shamba mpaka kwa soko hata kwa soko utauza na quality mzuri lakini kwa quality mbaya kuanzia kwa shamba kuleta mpaka kwa soko kwa soko takuwa na quality mbaya na tunakuanga na e, mambo ambayo tuna face katika shamba kama mvua ukosefu wa mabarabara sasa tukitumia broker nitabidi hiyo broker atajua ni njia gani atafuatia mziko ifike kwa barabara eh. asante sana alright ivon uh, those are just sentiments uh, from uh, one of the traders let's also hear from uh, one uh, onion trader who uh, is also selling uh, his uh, goods uh, in this uh, busy market kwa majina hebu tuambie uh, unaitwa nani na unauza nini? Oh, kwa jina naitwa Solo. Mimi ni mfanyabiashara wa kitunguu. Maisha ile tumelilia, maisha imekuwa ngumu kabisa. For example, mimi na uzanga kitunguu hii kubwa hii. Na uzanga hii kitunguu kubwa. Sijawahi usa kitunguu ndogo ndogo. Lakini maisha imekuwa ngumu. Tunafunga 100 mpaka 50. Unafunga 50 bado mteja ananungunika. So malifu mali, ina manisa, life imekuwa ngumu. So mimi naona kama nitafunga hata hii sasa. Ni at least ukabiliane na hii maisha. For example, mto hii ametoka shule ameletwa. Kuna barua tumepewa. Tunashindwa hapa chini. Nitatoa pesa ya mali hapa kupeleka kwa kina bibi mtatoa wapi okay. na na sasa tuambie eh, hii, hii kubwa eh, gunia kubwa yenyewe ulikuwa unauza ngapi kubwa inatoka kwa 27 sasa hii lakini wateja wainunui unaona paka nimeikata imekuja ndogo so my life hiyo imefika penye imefika tunasema kama Kenya inawezekana at least wause hii Kenya kila mtu apewe sehemu yake at least aenda ajipangage <laughs> All right. All right, all right. Um, clearly, Yvonne, um, uh, those are just sentiments uh, from another trader. And clearly, as you can see, uh, pricing of uh, these uh, agricultural produce uh, normally differs. And it's all, uh, from what we've had, it's all a case of uh, willing buyer, willing seller. And uh, they're actually willing to uh, reduce the price 
to a reasonable uh, level that can actually make them uh, earn some income by the end of the day. Yvonne. Thank you, Dennis, from Marikiti Market. It's it's always such a busy behave of activity, and I hope Dennis is able to buy some onions, um, you know, at wholesale price. <laughs> He's able to uh, right there. Okay, um, I have much to discuss, including coming back with the uh, prof to talk about traceability of the food, uh, safety, and also the cost of production. For instance, why are um, onions from Tanzania cheaper than those in Kenya? We'll talk about that. Uh, but please do forgive me, gentlemen. I need to take a commercial break but when we come back we'll talk about that and a lot more and I'm also checking out your feedback the hashtag is business now at Citizen TV Kenya at Yvonne Okara we are back in just a few moments stay with us Welcome back. We're talking about the cost of food and how it can be advantageous both to the producer, that's the farmer, and the consumer, that's uh, you and I, and the cost on our plate. Um, Prof, uh, before we went to the break, uh, Emmanuel had talked about safety of food and how that is an important factor we perhaps don't think about. How have you managed this at the Nairobi Farmers Market? You talked initially about traceability. Speak to us about that a little more. Uh, yeah, what, what we do, and I, I'll talk especially on the kind of food that we produce ourselves, and I know the other farmers do the same uh, we we focus uh, for me we focus on hydroponic farming that's why we grow food without soil which means we eliminate a lot of chemicals that normally would go into soil to grow the food that's one element of safety so what are you so, for, for some of my viewers who might not know <laughs> um, how you're growing food without soil Hy hydroponic farming yeah. uh, I, I think what you need to grow food is just the root support and then the delivery of nutrients mm -hmm. to the roots that's basically what you need. So once you eliminate soil, all the chemicals that you put in soil, you see, most of our soil is dead, and I, I keep saying mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that's why the difference between us and, uh, and Uganda, and by the way, it's only 17% of our, of our land is arable. 83% is arid or semi-arid. So we have to figure out how do we feed all these people with 17%, which means we have to embrace science and technology. That's what my brother was saying here. Mm. We have to embrace science and technology in terms of irrigation, in terms of now hydroponic science, hydroponic farming, and other types of farming. Hydroponics, when we eliminate soil, we eliminate a lot of chemicals that usually go to the treatment of food, I mean, uh, of, uh, of the soil and the disease. Now, when you do that, that food is safer, it grows faster, while at the same time, you're able to know exactly what you're going to get at the end of, of, the, of, the, of the growth cycle. Now, if you come to our store, uh, uh, our Miramisa store at, uh, at, uh, at Nairobi Farmers Market, we have a, run, a video that runs on production. And people can be able to see this is the people who are growing your food. This is how the food is grown. So you're meeting your, as you're shopping, you're meeting your, mm. you're meeting your farmers on a video mm. that we show. Mm. Part of the things that we're also going to do is have meet your farmer days, mm -hmm. where we, we have a bus, we have get people come on the bus, and we go and visit the farms where the, this food is grown, so you know exactly where the food is grown. Yeah. And that's why it is important that we look at the entire ecosystem of food production. Mm. Because just focusing on the production alone, without all the other issues that face farmers, uh, will not actually solve our problem. And, and very quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a very quick list so that uh, we can go through the other. Technology is key. Yeah. We use outdated technology in, in our farming. So we need to improve on how we teach our people in science and technology of farming. Two, climate change. And I think my brother here focuses a lot on climate change. Yeah. We need to look at the weather systems, the water, the quality of the water, uh, and the other things we need, P disease and pests that affect our food. That's one. Infrastructure is also key in terms of the roads, the market mechanism, the, the support that we give the farmers, whichever product that they're growing. The avocado, you had the lady say, yeah. I get a shilling. Yeah. Uh, but then you go and sell it for you know, an, another amount of money. Soil nutrients, fertility of soil, that's also extremely important. We have to understand as well. Lack of market access, and that's why the likes of Nairobi Farmers Market and others have to provide those markets directly for the farmers when they come in. Lack of capital for mechanization, and that goes now to the production and productivity 
per square meter or per acre. And therefore, I like what the farmer said, and he said supply and demand. When you have enough supply, yeah. uh, the, 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 the prices will come down. We have to increase the supply so that we bring down uh, oh, the, price for, the cost for the food. The cost of energy. It's also extremely, it affects the farmers as well. Political factors also affect farming. If you look at the politics of farming in this country, and especially in certain sectors, coffee, maize, uh, and all these things. Look at Galana. Yeah, uh, Galana, yeah. Galana could have made, we could be buying right now uh, uh, the two kilo bag at probably 60 shillings. Okay, but that failed because of several factors. Some of them is political, others are the cartels within the system and all those things. Then we have to look at our people. People, after they've been taught how to produce food in a certain way, they have to be disciplined enough mm -hmm. to follow that process that they've been taught. Yeah. The other one is a limited di diversification of our uh -huh. agricultural products. Uh -huh. We have, for the 17%, uh, we have to grow more food, different varieties, so that we can meet the demand that is out there. That, then minimal processing. We do minimal processing yeah. of our food. Yes. And that means that food, and because I'm in production, and I'm also in retail, uh, our supermarkets yeah. called Miramesas, yeah. uh, we are able to buy the food from the farmers. But there is that grade three that you as a customer will not be able to go to a supermarket and buy. So what do you do with it for the farmer? Mm -hmm. You have to process that food, yeah. the excess food. That now provides extra income for the farmer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that tomato that uh, they cannot be able to uh -huh. offtake and what do you do with yes, it? Yes, yes. You, you see so what I'm saying? A lot of wastage. So it's a lot of wastage okay. and all that. Inadequate and declining research in agriculture. Caro does a fantastic job, but when you, I, used, I was I'm an academic myself. Yeah. If you look at JQuad, JQuad was supposed to be Jomo Kenyatta University, University of Agriculture, Agriculture and, and Technology. Technology. Today, Jomo Kenyatta JQuad is one of the largest uh, business schools in the country. They have walked away from the core of what they were supposed to be. Egerton, the same thing. We have to start focusing now research into farming so we have better varieties, improve productivity. Uh, we, do, we fight diseases in a more efficient way of getting now the production to go. So there are six steps mm. in farming. Uh, Pre-production, that is preparing to produce. Yeah. That's extremely important. Right. The environment we create about around food production. Then from there we have the production. Then from the production we have the processing, distribution, market access, and then finally the consumer, consumer. which now goes now to consumer safety. Mm -hmm. How safe is the food that our people are eating? Right. It depends on what you put in it. Yeah. Those chemicals, those pesticides that you're putting in. Okay. If you go to some of the very green areas of this country, yeah. and I won't name the, the, the county, but there's one county that produces a lot of greens, a lot of the food, green food that we eat in the, this country, but they also have a very large uh, concentration of cancer cases. Uh -huh. And where do you trace that? Right. To the food. Okay, uh, a good one. Um, We've heard from potato farmers in Nakuru, but what is avocado farming like? I know I did, you know, and explain on how China was coming mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. avocado, the Haas variety, and that sort of thing. But what is it like, really, to produce avocado? Are they making money off of that? I know Prof had talked about that. Let's watch. <laughs> Ni, ninafanya kasi bure hakuna kitu napata kutoka miti inaitwa apkato hakuna apkato moja mtu akichukua Nairobi au Mombasa au mahali anachukua ni siringi moja ka siringi ka moja tu ndio anahusia mimi na kama ina chabunia ile msito ile mnaona ile e, e, tena wanaongea sengine chui ya hiyo Siringi miaine, miaine, hiyo ndiyo pesa, inafanya, inafanya kasi, hile mina hito mkulima, mkulima ya nini, inalima nini, si inalima tu vule, sasa mina ataka kutoa hii avocado, ni, ni mfanya kuhuni. Maprokao wakikuja, wakinunua hii avocado, hata avocado kumi, wanatupea siringi moja, sasa tunawana wacha tuwapea tu, wanato, wanatoa hata hile ya nyeicha komoa, Sasa tunawana wacha wachukue tu, maana hatuna mahali pa kuchukua hii afukado. Kwa gunia, tulikuwa tunanua ishu ya tulianzia kama miaine, e, tukakuja miatano. Sasa vile ya ipatikani, wengine wanakuzia mbako 1,000. 
ukiweka transport maneno ya kuchuna hii avocado kuweka kwa gunia kununua magunia kulipa wale wanakufanyia kazi upakie roli uli, ulipe roli unapata ukifika Nairobi unafaita, unapata faida ni kidogo sana mimi zile zangu nanunua hapa napelekea wa unapeleka Nairobi na uzia kuna wale watu wanakuja kununua in terms of sacks mtu anachukua gunia moja ama mbili na yeye anaenda kuivisha anauza kwa 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 wananchi pia wale wadogo wadogo wa kukonsi Okay um you know yeah. that's that's really interesting that's from Nyaribari Chache and we've heard from Nakuru um I want us to discuss something else before our time runs out and that's also the issues around climate change that is you know definitely mm -hmm. affecting um our, our farmers and and weather patterns we're in the middle of a drought um I want you to explain um you know this map that was you know put out by uh, yeah. the meteorological department mm -hmm. explain to us what this is and how this is going to affect farmers and the rain patterns we're seeing for I mean I think this month of October yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, Yvonne. I'm, I'm not a weather guy, but I, I, I understand this practically from the <laughs> yes, ground. Yes, right. Uh, I understand this practically from the ground. You know what climate change does? It, it is twofold. Eh? Yeah. And this is a conversation that a lot of people are not having when we talk about climate change. People think about reducing rainfall and reducing precipitation in general. It can be rainfall, it can be other forms of precipitation and reducing water for production. But in, in essence, I think uh, what we miss out is that, the, that that reduction of rainfall in other areas means more rainfall in other areas. And you, if you see this map, for example, with the, pr the projection of uh, rainfall yeah. uh, for this coming month, I think um, I think for about, uh, I think two weeks or towards the end, up, up to the end of the month, is that other areas will receive rainfall that could be slightly above average of mm -hmm. what they normally receive. Those are the Areas that are marked in, yes. in uh, yellow? Uh, yes, yes. And okay. my farm is in one, no, in green. In green, In yes. green, actually, on okay. the extreme left. Right. My farm is in one of those areas in Wasingishu County. Uh -huh. and, and you can imagine maize is in the farm right now. So farmers do not even want the rain to come because they want to harvest the maize. Destroy. So the maize is in the farm and they're struggling with that. <coughs> um, those of us who, are, who you know, who farm where there's uh, a lot of flow of water, we are going to deal with that. So we have to dig these terraces, we have to do drainage, we have to get the water out, basically. And if you see the other area, the yellow area on the extreme, uh, these guys are going to receive less rainfall than, than what they normally receive. And this is the twofold effect of climate change. So when we talk about climate change, I think it's important that also we really need to put awareness out there for farmers to know what to do about this, for producers to know. Not only farmers, we also pastoralists, also fisher folks. Mm. Uh, these guys need to know what to do. I think it's not enough for government to say, brace for heavy rains. Yeah. I think that is what we get every time from the <laughs> from the government, that, you know, brace for heavy rains. Yeah. These and these areas. Or brace for no rain. Brace, brace for, for no for, rain. I, I yeah. think there should be a conversation, okay, so what is this bracing meaning, actually? Right. How do you brace for, for no rain? Yeah. And, and, <coughs> and I think we, you know, we have killed our extension services, but I think this is when we really yeah. need extension services. Yes. Um, this information, some of us have the privilege of accessing it because we have access to internet, uh, because we can see it on TV, we can uh, hear about it on but radio. But the lady in Nyaribari Chat that we she, heard from she doesn't know yeah but she doesn't would, know. would benefit from you know that hands-on advice yeah. exactly. I'm here to talk to you about exactly. your avocado this mm -hmm. is what you need to and do and one of the things that we really uh, promote as, as as root to food you know if this approach to farming that we call agroecology agroecology is basically an approach to farming that works with nature rather than against it and working with nature needs you to have a lot of information you need to know when it's going to rain when when the sun is going to uh, to be hot um, so that you know what to do Okay, uh, because a lot of farmers, I, I, you know, technology is good and all that, but a lot of farmers don't have access to this technology. They mm. only have yeah. the soil they have, mm. the trees around the farm, yeah. Yeah. and all these things. So I think it's important that the government invests in p p pumping out information on production, including how to do production vis-a-vis -vis the weather patterns. And, and uh, consumers also need to really, uh, you know, push for this. I think there are a lot of Kenyans today who are talking about climate change. Let uh, all these climate change activists also shine a light on how climate change is impacting producers and especially small-scale producers who normally don't have access to technology and they don't have access to alternatives on how to deal with this uh, with these issues we definitely we are going to have an impact of that a quick example in January not January I think in around March where we have the long rain starting there was a lot of rain in Eldoret then around June it was very dry and because of that uh, short period of drought um, we're estimating low production of maize 
Okay? So this is not rocket science, what mm -hmm. we are talking about. These things have real, 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 real impacts on the ground. So let us get our farmers to start talking about mulching, for example. How can they mulch their lands? So that, because lands that, were, you know, that are, are being mulched, had more resilience. You can see it practically. And these are things we knew and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we studied mm -hmm. for. Was it in the 4K club? Ex those exactly. Things Actually, which I, I, I see was going to comment on the 4K. Right. <laughs> um, hold that thought for a minute because that will be your final thought, uh, Prof. Um, you know, we've talked about the production end of things. Um, you know, we've seen what's happening. We've even gone to the market. But what is it like, you know, for the consumer, for that, you know, we're talking about farm to fork. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to take a look at the fork end of, of these things. Uh, Patrick Igunza was at a restaurant uh, a little earlier to talk about you know, what that process is like at the very tail end. Let's watch. My name is Miriam Nubangwe. I'm CEO and founder of KDH Stock. I started this business in uh, 2014, which I'm still running up to date. What sort of foods do you sell here? I sell authentic traditional food, uh, Western Kenya cuisine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what is it that advises you to actually go the Kenya way? Um, basically, it's because of the health aspect, because everyone now is going healthy, uh -huh. and uh, we are trying to get away from uh, junk food and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I should introduce this traditional food so that we can remind ourselves on how our grandparents used to eat and they lived long, free from lifestyle diseases. Amazing. And uh, what uh, sort of foods are we talking about, actually? Uh, basically, we are talking about all the protein items that are prepared the traditional way. And at the same time, a wide range of traditional vegetables, which we basically get from farmers, especially from Western Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And uh, yeah. your price range, how does yes. it look like? Um, our price this range. We have got different types. We've got the ones that we sell at the restaurant and we also have the ones that are pre-cooked, which customers can carry home after having a meal or enjoying a vegetable on their plate at the restaurant. And so mostly the ones that are pre-cooked, they range from as little as, little as 250 up to 450, depending on the type of vegetable. Mm -hmm. Because they're usually determined also on availability and season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, on the higher side? On the higher side is like 450 a pack if I may say, and then now for the restaurant park, uh, op, um, I mean portions, you can get up to 250, you can have a decent meal of a traditional vegetable and ugali. Mm -hmm. Yes. And perhaps what's the uh, mo uh, most prized of your items? Um, most prized is chicken, Kenya chicken, because we get free red chicken, which is uh, the pure road runner, so it goes for around 600 shillings, uh -huh. for a portion which is a quarter portion. All right. Yes. And what is it that advises uh, your pricing when it comes to the kind of food that you sell here? Um, it actually, what it determines is the market value. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we look at what is available. I mean, uh, the price at that, uh, the going price at that uh, time, that's what determines our prices. But you see, when you're running a food business, it's usually very tricky to keep adjusting prices here and there. But the farmers will always adjust their prices because now when, let's say, the fuel prices go up or let's say there's... Uh, a drought is uh, available. I mean, um, no enough water to water their vegetables. They definitely have to increase the prices. So, for us, we don't usually like increase the prices as such. We maintain them, and then the prices as such. We maintain them, and then now when it is high season for them, that's when now we benefit from that season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you prefer buying uh, from uh, the market, or do you actually source your uh, produce? from the farmers themselves? I think it's better to source from the farmers and I'll be very honest and I'm very proud that I've also started doing farming myself because sometimes it becomes very tricky to get exactly what you're looking for and uh, the challenges of logistics in terms of transportation and all. So it's better to get them directly from the farmers to avoid the middle person. So if you find me going to the market, probably it's just an emergency, which I hardly do. Most of the time I get from the farmers, which I have enough networks from the village side that help me to get these vegetables. All right, and you think farmers actually who are connected to people like you and many other restaurants do benefit uh, from Yes, their... they do because I can say that since I started this business I have retained the same farmers from then to date which I can say like consistently since 2017 I've been using the same farmers up to now. Okay, yes. thank you very much indeed. Thank you too. All right. I remember a time when, uh, you know, traditional food was actually the norm and maybe we might have thought we're eating it because we're poor. But I still don't understand why these days if you go and ask for 
um, you know, those traditional vegetables. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think what they are, because, mm -hmm. you know, we ate them, we, like, you know, mm -hmm. and those things. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. that's what we used to eat. Now yes. when you go to a restaurant, it's 500 shillings, and I, I just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call organic, and it yeah. sounds nice and fancy. Anyway, um, interesting, the politics of food as yeah. well as the cost. Um, I'd like us to have our, our final thoughts. Prof, I think I'll, I'll begin with you. Um, you know, some takeouts from the conversation we've had today. Uh, I think for me, Vaughn, is that food, we have to look at the entire ecosystem of food production. Our responsibility as farmers, our responsibility as people who make policy on food, our responsibility as consumers, our responsibility for everybody who is within the value chain. We have to look at ways of, one, having healthy, safe food. At the same time, and that's why the issue of uh, the Big Four agenda where agriculture was part, one part of that. And I was going to comment when we launched the 4K Club with yes, the president. Right. Uh, I was there. Yeah. I actually exhibited and had a conversation with the president on the same. It's important that we, we take agriculture back to where I remember 4K clubs when I was growing up. Yeah. I knew about growing food. Now you see a lot of city kids and even kids in rural areas who are di so disconnected with earth and with the growth of food that they actually are totally, totally oblivious to how the food that they eat but, but, is But can is you concerned. blame them when they see um, maybe their mother or their grandmother, like the one in Yaribari Church is saying, I don't get a penny out of this. And we're pushing young people into agriculture and we're trying to make it sexy is the word. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, if they see their parents yeah. and their grandparents are making money out of it, they're going to go into farming. And that's why we have to improve the entire ecosystem. Not. That's yeah. why we have to improve the entire ecosystem. Right. We have organized market. If you look at that uh, avocado farmer, yeah. she's frustrated. She wants to stop growing avocados. Yet in Nairobi, you can say, we don't have enough avocados. <laughs> now, you, you talk yeah. about the greens. Right. In, in our supermarket, our Miramesa supermarkets, we don't have enough greens. I'm having to call people in Kisi and other places to grow the greens for us in order for them to be, to be able to, bro to be brought to Nairobi. We also have to educate our people and the farmers on specific food. Remember when I said, we have a very limited amount of foods that we grow mm -hmm. that does not meet the demand at least there. Yeah. We need to expand our varieties of the food that we grow yeah. so that we can also expand the, the, the demand for some of these products. And we'll be able to get better prices for some of these, uh, some of these products. Okay. Kenyajis are now are very expensive. Uh, we have very few farmers who are doing it. Uh, then, but then at the same time, like now I have some of the young farmers who grow for me. I've, 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 there's a group that I've told, just grow for me. Uh, Terere, Managu, these, all these, all those. Stop growing this other one. Just grow this for me so that yeah. we can meet the market. Okay. So we have to interact with the growers. We have mm -hmm. to interact with the consumers. We also have to, to create that environment that allows them to do well. Okay. Yeah. Emmanuel, final thoughts? A minute, if you yeah, can. Yeah, <laughs> very quickly. You know, um, I worked uh, or supported my uncle in a shop, my uncle Good Body. And he used to run a retail shop. So he told me uh, one time, because I used to see, you know, one guy would come and buy a kilo of sugar at 120 shillings. Another one comes immediately after and buys the same kilo of sugar at 100 shillings. And he used to tell me, you know, people in Nairobi don't ask. <laughs> so you don't even ask your neighbor how much you buy sugar. And, and this is the tragedy that we have. I think consumers need to really be involved in how mm -hmm. their food is produced, in the cost of food. And we really need to be concerned about the plight of farmers because it's the farmers who feed us. And we really need to, to, to listen. When farmers are making noise anywhere in this country, I think everyone should just stop and listen to what they're saying. I think we'll get into a society where we cannot have people produce food for us and it will be very tragic. Mm. So we really need to pay attention and, and, and I think consumers are at the center of it all. And uh, when you're talking about the cost of avocados, you know avocados became expensive the day they, 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 they showed up on Instagram. <laughs> so consumers can really decide what we are focusing on. So when avocados started showing up on Instagram, that is when the prices went up. So we hope that the price will also go up for farmers and producers on the ground. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, which is why even in the five, the five I said earlier, consumers are you know big drivers of mm -hmm. food of, 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 of the safety of the cost um, and indeed what goes back to the farmer mm -hmm. uh, you know at the very end and indeed yeah. everyone else across the value chain going yeah. back mm -hmm. uh, thank you gentlemen really for joining us Emmanuel Asamba from Root to Food and Professor Dominic Mwenja from the Nairobi Farmers Market and uh, Patrick Igunza um, and uh, Dennis Sotieno who was at Marikiti and for hearing from Nakuru farmers and those in Nyarivari Chache and other areas of the country um, we hope this is it so what shall we put on instagram next so that potatoes 
No, it was banana bread actually during um, the pandemic at the start. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Uh, please keep the comments coming. The hashtag is business now. I don't have time to go through um, all of the comments, but it's um, um, really, really um, good to hear from all of you. Thank you very much for watching the show today. As always, enjoy your lunch and hopefully that makes somebody earn some money back across the value chain at the end of the day. Have a great uh, afternoon. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.